All right, in this video, I want to talk about finding absolute maximum and minimum values of a multivariable function. And to be specific, our, we'll have uh, two independent variables here, x, y. Um, in the process, if you remember how to find absolute maximum and minimum uh, values when you have a function in one variable, it's very similar. Um, you basically just have to find the critical points. Okay, so we'll take, in this case, uh, we'll take partial derivatives and set them equal to zero. Um, and then, you know, in, in first semester calculus, you have to plug the endpoints of the interval in. We're going to have to do something a little more complicated here. We're going to have to find the extreme values on the boundary of whatever region we're given. And then you still just pick the largest and the smallest. So the ideas um, are very analogous, I think. So. Uh, but let's go through one, hopefully not too crazy. We're going to find the absolute max and min of this function, 3 plus xy minus x minus 2y. D is going to be this, uh, this closed triangular region with vertices at 1, 0, 5, 0, and uh, 1, 4. So, all right, a couple things we're going to have to do. Uh, we have to find, uh, we have to take the partial derivatives. So we'll have to take the partial with respect to x, set it equal to 0. And we'll also have to solve the partial with respect to y. We'll set that equal to 0. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the partial derivative with respect to x. So let's see, uh, 3 is just a constant, so that goes away. The derivative of x times y, OK, so we're treating y like a constant. So uh, our, our derivative would simply be y. If we take the derivative of negative x, that'll leave us with negative 1. And if we take the derivative of the negative 2y term, again, since we're treating y like a constant, that will simply go away. Um, likewise, we have to take the partial derivative with respect to y. So again, 3 is a constant. It goes away. Um, y is now our variable. x is like a constant. So we'll just get x when we take the derivative of xy. The negative x will simply go away. And um, when we take the derivative of negative 2y, uh, with respect to y, we'll simply get negative 2. All right, so this isn't too bad. We have to set each one of these equal to 0, and we have to solve. Whoops, I almost wrote another y. So we'll have to take x minus 2 and set that equal to 0. So obviously uh, not too bad equations here. Uh, x equals 2, doesn't get much better than this. Uh, y equals 1. Um, so OK, so uh, uh, one of our critical points Uh, it says is going to be at 2, 1. So we still have to kind of make sure, you know, that this critical point is within our, our boundary, because otherwise we won't even use it. So let's go back for a second and think about our boundary here. Um, so we've got, we've got this uh, triangular region. Um, so 1, 0, that would be right there. Uh, 5, 0 would be right there. Uh, 1, 4, that'll be up there. So we've got our little triangular region that we're talking about. Um, so we're trying to maximize our function over this region. OK, so certainly uh, we found our critical point to be 2, 1. So certainly uh, 2, 1 would uh, definitely fall in that interval. So we will, in fact, uh, evaluate our function at this critical point, 2, 1. OK, so now kind of the tricky part is we also have to evaluate this function um, on the boundaries. Okay, so this will kind of be the slightly uh, longer part. So uh, I think I'm going to break this up here into two parts. The first thing I'm going to do is find equations uh, for all these. So, you know, to, to find the uh, equation of this uh, line that goes through 1 and 4, well, that's easy enough. That's just going to be the line x equals 1. So that's going to be one of our boundaries. Let's see, the other bound, another boundary at the bottom, that's just going to be y equals 0. So that's not bad. That's going to be another one of our boundaries. And then we also have to find an equation um, for this line. Well, however you want to do it, um, I'm just going to use uh, point-slope form. So if we take y minus, I'm going to use this point on the line. So I'm trying to just find the equation of this line. I'll use y minus 0. We'll figure out the slope, x minus 5. Well, let's see, the slope, if we go from uh, 1, 4 to 5, 0, we would go down by 4. So change in y is just negative 4. And then if we go from 1 to 5, that'll be a change of x, uh, a, a change in x equal to 4. 
So it looks like we're simply going to get the equation y equals negative 1 times x minus 5, or equivalently y equals negative x plus 5. So that's going to be another one of our boundaries. And now we'll kind of begin this process. Um, okay, so, so plugging our critical point, this, this critical point 2 comma 1, back into the function. That's easy enough. You know, we'll, we'll do that here in a second. We'll plug 2 in for x and 1 in for y. But we also have to evaluate this function. We have to maximize this original function over each one of these boundaries. And that'll be the slightly more tedious part. So uh, I think I'm going to do that in a separate video. But again, this is kind of the first step. You just have to take the partial derivatives, set them equal to 0, solve. You know, obviously, again, these are pretty easy partial derivatives. Nothing too crazy there. Check that your critical point is in the boundary that you're given, uh, the region that you're given. Excuse me. Find equations for all the boundary uh, boundary curves, whatever they may be. Uh, hopefully, you'll get, get a, a kind of a simple boundary like I have here. It's just lines. But now the tricky part, or kind of the not even tricky, but just it's just going to take a few minutes. Again, now we're just going to have to plug. Uh, we're going to have to somehow evaluate our, our function at these boundaries. So. All right, stay tuned. Um, we'll do that in, a, in another video.